Sure. They'll be looking at the processes involved in performing our jobs. Hello, my name is Michelle Ralston, and I'm from the Arizona Department of Corrections. I'd like to introduce Dan Galvin from the Arizona Department of Transportation and Art Koganor from the Department of Public Safety. In recent years, many states have faced some very serious economic difficulties. Some have resorted to drastic measures in order to make ends meet. Governor Fy Simonton hopes to avoid this through the implementation of Project SLIM. SLIM stands for Statewide Long-Term Improved Management. It's a means of analyzing the process of running the state of Arizona to see if we're doing things the most efficient way possible. It's all part of a larger business philosophy called total quality management. And its proponents, like Governor Symington, say it's an idea whose time has definitely come. Study each organization, uh, what it's doing, how it's staffed, um, and then sit back and ask the, the questions, the hard questions about, well, can we do it better? Uh, are we spending our time fruitfully? Uh, are we organized properly? It really goes to the basics uh, as far as uh, organizational structure. In order to find that new way of doing things, Project SLIM is divided into four different branches. First, there's the steering committee. It's made up of 15 members chosen by the governor who have extensive experience in the business world. They will oversee the operations of the project team. The project team consists of 24 state employees. They will be the ones who go into the 13 state agencies to be analyzed under Project SLIM to find out just how things are done. I was looking for a, a broad-based uh, group of people who had experience, extensive experience in the private sector and in organizations and uh, uh, as well as uh, in government uh, and, 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 an and a committee that would have a, um, uh, what I would call a, a broad representation of all the interests uh, involved uh, so that it, it would be fair and, uh, and try to bring them together uh, as a committee to affect this real change in state government. The state project team members, uh, they were selected through an interview process, uh, looking at their skills and their talents, uh, looking at their desires and their personal philosophies. In addition to the work done by project team members, there are also five special studies as part of Project SLIM. The special studies will focus on the areas of information management and personnel administration. They'll try to improve the systems we use for handling information, like data processing and retrieval. And they'll try to find better ways of training state employees, developing their talents, and seeing to it they are adequately paid for the work they do. And we're going to be looking at how we can bring a more cohesive uh, approach to this that would be not only cost effective, but produce a better result for the end user, in this case, the state employee and the state citizen seeking those services. Overseeing all this is the auditing firm of Cooper's Librand. Consultants from the company have trained all the other participants in the project on what to look for and how to carry out their tasks. They bring extensive experience in this sort of review to the project. All four branches of Project SLIM will focus their attention on these 13 of the state's largest agencies. As the members of the project team make their way around the agencies under review, They'll be looking at the processes involved in performing our jobs. In other words, they want to see how a particular job is done, not how a particular person does it. And they'll be looking at every aspect of an agency from top to bottom, not just lower level employees. Throughout the process, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, business processes as opposed to how individual people perform their jobs. So we'll be looking at those areas that uh, can best fulfill the state's uh, requirements and we're not going to be looking at especially how an individual performs that job. They will be trying to find out if there is a better, more cost-effective way to do the things we do. They'll try to eliminate the barriers to a more efficient performance. That's the bottom line for this entire project, efficiency. They'll start by working with the agency uh, directors and their staff in determining the missions of the agencies and the desired service levels and, and reaching some agreement on those areas. Then they will go through the agency talking to the people actually doing the work to get the process flow of how the uh, mission is accomplished. All across corporate America uh, and, and also in some state governments, there have been efforts uh, like this undertaken which have saved anywhere from 15 to 25 percent in terms of operating costs.
As we bring our first year of our program to a close and start our second major year, I want to spend a few minutes with you telling you how proud I am and how proud the individual members of the Board of County Commissioners are of your accomplishments. Not only from the team standpoint, but what you've been able to do on an individual basis. We're already experiencing statistically uh, marked improvements in what's happened. Uh, as an example, uh, we know for a fact that about 15% fewer requests or complaints are being received by the Commission offices. And that on the postcards that we send out on service, we're showing a 6% improvement on what people think about us. And this is that perception and quality that we've been looking at. The Pinellas County Building Department wants to make things easier for you. Certain building department permits are now able to be obtained over the phone. In the past, a private citizen or a contractor looking to acquire a building permit in Pinellas County would need to visit the permit section in order to secure the necessary forms. This would often mean spending several minutes looking for a place to park, only to spend several more waiting in a permit line. Some contractors make five trips a week. You can imagine the time that this involves. Through a suggestion from a building department staff member, the department has recently begun to accept permit orders over the phone. Upon completion, the forms may be mailed back to the building department for processing. This is much easier for the builder and helps reduce flow to the county permit section. Pinellas County's Emergency Communications Department recently developed a 911 telephone training center. This portable display includes photos of emergency personnel in action and offers free coloring books to the kids. It is staffed by the Civil Emergency Services Public Education Coordinator and a team of actual 911 operators. These staff members set up the display at shopping malls and at major events such as the county fair. The idea behind the display is to train children in the use of our 911 emergency phone system. Children are asked to choose a tragedy, such as a fire or a car accident, and then dial 911 for guidance as to what they should do. The child's telephone is connected to another phone behind the display that is staffed by a 911 operator. The operator asks the child questions, such as their address and what their emergency is. The hope is to familiarize local children with the 911 system so that they might act more calmly and make the right decisions in an actual emergency. County right-of-way agents keep you informed. Pinellas County right-of-way agents will now contact property owners in person at the earliest possible time before a road construction project gets underway. Previously, county employees, property appraisers, surveyors, and other county workers would be seen working on private property, and the owners wouldn't have any idea what was happening. The county's engineering department would receive calls from property owners wondering what the county was planning to do. Now, right-of-way agents contact the property owner in advance. The agent's job is to inform the owner of tentative plans, explain what should be happening in the next couple of weeks, and leave a business card with their name on it in case the owner has any questions later. Neighbors will also be contacted to explain how the project might affect them. Right of entry agreements and easements will be obtained by visiting with the owner and explaining exactly what will happen. This procedure will replace letters previously used to contact property owners. Agents will also follow up with the owner more often so that they and their neighbors will stay informed as the project progresses. Just in case you're late, the water system gets up early. The Pinellas County Water System now makes a pickup at their water bill drop box between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning. This additional pickup ensures that late payments received through the drop box are applied to the customer's account as soon as possible. The new procedure also gets the information to the dispatcher and field representative sooner. This helps prevent unnecessary field trips, shut off of water, and additional service charges to the customer. The water system has found this new procedure to save time, money, and make for better customer relations.